write down the range of f f is given by f of x is equals to x squared minus 2x minus 3 and we're given the sketch right here in front of us and then we have the coordinates of t which is the tangent point of f of x the coordinates of t it's 1 and minus 4. as you can clearly see f of x it cannot be below minus 4 as minus 4 is its minimum point right so the range for f of x 6.1 y is greater or equals to minus 4 y cannot be less than minus 4 as you can clearly see from the sketch right and then 6.2 calculate the coordinates of d and e what are the coordinates d and e what's special about those coordinates they are seen to be the x intercepts of f so x intercept we know fully well that we are letting y be equals to zero so we're gonna have x squared minus 2x minus 3 being equals to zero so x and x which two factors of minus 3 do we add and get minus 2 that is minus 3 and plus 1 so x is equals to 3 or x is equals to minus 1 the question said the coordinates of d and e so if you leave it like this we are losing some marks d we have negative 1 and 0 while on the other hand we have e e is 3 for the x value and 0 for the y value so there you go we have the coordinates of d and e let's take a look at 6.3 so 6.3 write down the equation of g or determine not write it down right the equation of g so g touches f of x at p and e right g of x and f of x they intersect at p and e um g of x is a straight line so g of x is equals to m x plus c we need the gradient and just one other coordinate to substitute and find the value of c let's determine the values of p and the values of e if we determine the value of p and the value of e uh, the coordinates rather we will be able to say y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 so let's do that uh, the coordinates of e we already have the coordinates of e uh, that is 3 and 0 we just need the coordinates of p what is special about p uh, p is the y-intercept of f is given to us in the equation statement so y-intercept we just let x b equals to zero so if we do that we get y being equals to zero squared minus two multiplied by zero minus three this is equals to minus three obviously so the coordinates of p we have zero and minus three so there we go we have p and e let's go ahead and find the gradient the gradient y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 i keep on writing x1 here in place of y1 i don't know why that is so okay let's take e as our second point if we take e as our second point then y2 will be zero and y1 will be minus three divided by x2 x2 at e that is three at p that is zero so we have minus we have three actually on the numerator so three divided by three that is one so at this point we know that uh, i don't think that's gonna fit at this point we know that uh, g of x is equals to x plus c yeah because uh, the gradient is one and then now we can go ahead and substitute e or p uh, let's substitute e because the values are positive um we are less likely to make a mistake there if we do that we're gonna have x y value is zero x value is three plus c so minus three is equals to c so g of x is equals to x minus three there we go that is 6.3 let's take a look at 6.4 so 6.4 on the other hand write down the coordinates of x for which f of x minus g of x is greater than zero 
Well, you can answer this question as it is, or you can just write it as f of x is greater than g of x. We're just taking g of x to the right hand side. So now we're just looking for values of x for which the graph of f of x is above the graph of g of x. Right. So let's see. From this point up to infinity, f of x is above g of x. And from this point up to negative infinity, f of x is above g of x. f of x is below g of x between p and e. But apart from that, uh, f of x will be above uh, g of x. Right. So what are those x values? When x is greater than 3, f of x is greater than g of x. That is the x value of e. And then when x is less than minus, no, 0, not minus. When x is less than 0, then also uh, f of x will be greater than g of x. That is all we need to do for that question, um, 6.4. Let's move to 6.5. I've been corrected by one of the viewers about 6.5. So this is actually the second version of this video and not the first one. So in 6.5, we want the maximum vertical distance between H and G, not H and F, like I initially solved the problem. So we know that G of X is equal to X minus 3. We determine that above, right? And then h of x, on the other hand, it is equal to minus f of x. We just need to substitute f of x here. f of x is x squared minus 2x minus 3. So we have minus x squared plus 2x plus 3. This is h of x and this is g of x. We want to determine the maximum vertical distance between these two. H of x is going to look like this. That is how H of x is going to look like. So clearly, we have H of x being above G of x. When that is the case, the distance is going to be H of x minus G of x. So that is what we are working with. H of x, we know that it is minus x squared plus 2x plus 3. And then the g of x, that is x minus 3. So we're going to have minus x squared, 2x minus x, that is plus x. And then 3 minus minus 3, that is going to be plus 6. So we have plus 6. So this is the distance we are working with here. Right. So in order to find the maximum, we need to either derivate this and equate to 0 or find the x value of the turning point. The x value at the turning point is minus b divided by 2a. Minus b is 1, the coefficient of x, and a is minus 1. So we have x being equals to minus 1 divided by minus 2. That is 1 over 2. So x is equals to a half. So now we can go ahead and find the distance. The distance is going to be minus and then in place of x, we have a half squared plus a half plus 6. Let me just put that in my calculator. So minus a half squared plus a half in place of x plus 6. This is 6.25 or 25 over 4. 25 over 4 units. Right, let's see if we substituted correctly. Um, I think I did. So there we go. That is the maximum vertical distance between H and G and not between H and F of X. The last question. Let's take a look at that. Given that K of X is equal to G of X minus N, determine N if K is a tangent to F. Determine n if k is a tangent to f. Right. k of x equals to g of x minus n. So let's substitute g of x first here and see what we have. g of x, we know that it is x minus 3. We calculated it before. Uh, minus n. So k of x is x minus 3 
minus n. So determine n if k is a tangent to f, right? So the gradient here, take a look at this. The gradient of k of x is equal to 1. So the gradient here is equal to 1. So what we can do, we can derivate f of x and equate the gradient to, to 1 and then find the x value where f of x is equal to, where f prime of x, the gradient is 1. With that x value, we can then substitute it into f of x to find a point that lies on k of x. Let me show you what I'm proposing. I'm saying that uh, f prime of x is equal to 2x minus 2. If we equate this to 1, the gradient of k of x, we're going to find a point that lies on k of x. So 2x minus 2 is equal to 1. So 2x is equal to 3 x is equal to 3 over 2. So this point or this x of 3 over 2, we're going to then substitute it into f of x in order to find a point that lies on k of x, right? So f of x, x squared, so 3 over 2 squared minus 2 x, 3 over 2 minus 3. So let's take a look at these. So we have... 3 over 2 squared minus 2, 3 over 2 minus 3. So this gives us minus 15 over 4. So right, this point 3 over 2 minus 15 over 4, it lies on k of x. So we can substitute that point into k of x in order to find the value of n. If we do that, y value is minus 15 over 4. This is equal to k of x is x minus 3 minus n. x is 3 over 2 minus 3 minus n. So we are very close to finding the value of n. Minus 15 over 4 minus 3 over 2 plus 3 should be equal to minus n. So let me put that in my calculator. So minus 15 over 4 minus 3 over 2 plus 3 is minus 9 over 4 and this is equals to minus n so 9 over 4 should be equals to n so there we go we have the value of n